section 3.3, Solving by Elimination. The elimination method is for solving systems of equations, makes us make use of addition principle for equations. For example, we add to add two numbers to make zero. So here I have some quick examples of what it means to be, this is actually called the additive inverse. All right, so two plus what would give me zero? Well, we know that two plus negative two would give me zero. What about negative two plus what would result in zero? Negative two plus two? What about fractions? Three fourths? Negative three fourths? What about negative three fourths? Positive three fourths. So we see it's the same number, but with a negative. So if I add them, that would produce a zero. Using an additive inverse, notice that in its sum of the same number as a positive, that it's just a sum of a positive and a negative. Thus, to solve using elimination method, we can um, eliminate one variable by creating an additive inverse. So let's take a look at this system. Let's solve by elimination. Well, if I look at my x's, if I add them, I will not get zero. What if I look at my y's? Yeah, right, if I add my y's, negative three plus three, that would give me zero, they'll add to be zero. That's the whole point of elimination. So if we add our two systems, negative three y plus three y, that's zero, and we're left with negative two, no, not negative, two x minus four x, we get negative two x is equal to negative one. All right, to get x by itself, let's divide by negative two. Get x is equal to one half. Okay, what do we do with this? Well, I want to answer is x comma y, and we have the x. Now, what do we do with this? We plug it back into any one of our equations. Which one? Any one, whichever you think will be best. How about we do the first one? Two times x, instead of x, we'll write one half, minus three y equals zero. Well, you can write this as two over one. Two times one will give us two, and one times two will give us two minus 3y equals 0, so I have 1 minus 3y equals 0. We subtract 1 of both sides. We're left with negative 3y equals negative 1. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, y is equal to 1 third. So my answer would be, my x is 1 half, and my y is one third. That's process by elimination. Now, sometimes they won't be as pretty and we have to do some work. So looking at these numbers, if I look at my x's, three x plus two x does not give us zero x. So that's not helpful. And three y plus six y does not give us zero. So I can't do anything there. But I have an equation, so I, that's helpful to us because as long as I multiply something to every number in my equation, the equality still holds. So maybe I can multiply something to one or both of my equations so that I can create an additive inverse. I like this three and six. I, I notice that three times two will give me six. I have a positive 6, so I want to produce a negative 6. So I would want to multiply that 3 by a negative 2 to create a negative 6. So let's multiply that entire equation by a negative 2. What do we get? 3x times negative 2 will give me negative 6x. 3y times negative 2 will give me negative 6y. And 15 times negative 2 
negative 30. That second one, I didn't do anything to it, so it stays the same. 2x plus 6y equals 22. Let's go ahead and add them. So for my first term, negative 6x plus 2x gives me negative 4x. My 6 is add to make 0, which is what we wanted. And negative 30 plus 22 gives us negative 8. So I have negative 4x is equal to 8. Divided by negative 4, divided by negative 4. We're left with x is equal to negative 2. Now that we have one of our, our potential, or one of our answers, let's go ahead and plug it into back, back to any one of our equations. It doesn't matter which one. Let me use the one with smaller numbers. So I have 3 times x, which is negative 2, plus 3y equals 15. While 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, plus 3y equals 15. We add 6 to both sides to get 6, 0. And I'm left with 3y is equal to 15 plus 6, 21. Divide by 3, divide by 3, we're left with y is equal to 7. That's also our answer. Remember your answer is a coordinate point, x comma y. So my answer is negative 2 comma 7. That was fun, right? I think elimination is the funnest. All right, solve the system. So same case, I'm looking at my x's, and I'm looking at my y's, and none of them add up to make 0. So I need to multiply something to 1, or maybe both of our equations to make it happen. When I see 2 and 5, I think of 10, right? 2 times 5 gives me 10. All right, so if I multiply my first equation by a 5, that will give me 10. If I multiply my second equation by a 2, that will give me a 10 for x. We're looking at these numbers. I need to make one of them negative, so when I add them, they add to make 0. It doesn't matter which one. I'll make that top one negative. Okay, let's go ahead and see what we get. 2x times negative 5 gives me negative 10x. 3y times negative 5, negative 15y. And 17 times 5, I need to do some work. We get 85, negative 85. All right, next equation. 5x times 2 is 10x. 7y times 2 plus 14y. And 29 times 2, well, 30 times 2 is 60. Minus 1 and minus 1. You get 58. All right. Let's go ahead and add them. Negative 10 plus 10. Woohoo! We get 0. They're gone. Negative 15y plus 14y. We get negative 1y is equal to negative 85 plus 58. We get... Um, have to do the work. We borrow 1. So we have 2 and 5, 7, and 7 minus 5, we get 2, so negative 27. So I have negative y equals negative 27. We divide by negative 1, negative 1, y is equal to 27. All right. Now I have to go back and plug it into my equation. It doesn't matter which one. I'll use the first one. So I have 2x plus 3y equals 17. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in a y for 27. So that I have 2x plus... 3y, y will be 27, is equal to 17. So let's go ahead and work this out.
3 times 27, but we have 2x plus 3 times 27. We get 81. 81 is equal to 17. We want to subtract 81, subtract 81. We're left with 2x is equal to 81 minus 17. We get negative 64. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x is equal to negative 32. So you bring it together, our answer is negative 32 divided by 27. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So what makes the next one not as pretty as our other problem was the fact that we have decimals. Luckily, we have an equation, so I can go ahead and multiply the same thing to both sides, and that will allow me to work with that problem. Okay, so as long as I multiply the same thing to the entire equation, we're in good shape. So let's multiply this first equation. Notice how we all go to the tenths place. Let's multiply by 10. Here, I need to find the greatest common denominator. So all these numbers can be, can divide the number 35. So let's multiply everything by 35. For my first equation, it just moves everything over one decimal so that I have 2x plus 3y equals 17. For our second equation, I multiply every number by 35 and then it simplifies. So for my last number, that, that makes that 35 1. Here I'm left with a 7. 7 times 1 gives me 7y. And here, 35 divided by 7, I'm left with 5. So I have 5x. So we're left with 5x plus 7y is equal to 29. All right. We want to go ahead and solve. But didn't we just solve it? We did. So I just wanted to do this problem to show you how you, if you have decimals or fractions, which we're not a fan of, I'm not a fan of, we can go ahead and multiply the same thing to our entire equation to get integers, meaning whole numbers, which is something that we like. So we just did this problem right above. Okay, now we have some special cases to consider for this, for this section. So recall, what are we doing? We're trying to see, find a solution. A solution means that if I have two graphs, they're going to cross and meet at a special point. Don't forget there's cases where they're parallel or where that graph is actually the same as the other, so they overlap. When they're parallel, you're going to get a false statement, which is no solution. When they overlap, you're going to get a true statement, so that's infinitely many solutions. go ahead and see what we have in our first case. So let's go ahead and try to create an additive inverse. Let's multiply that first equation by negative 1. So that would make this negative and I can add to make that 0. Okay, so if I multiply by negative 1, I'm left with negative y minus, I think I meant to make that one x. There we go. Negative y minus 3x is equal to negative 5. Then I have y plus 3x equals negative 2. Nothing happened to that second one. Let's go ahead and add them. Negative y plus y, well, that's 0. Negative 3x plus 3x, well, that's 0, too. So I have 0 plus 0 is equal to negative 5 plus negative 2, negative 7. 
So I'm left with 0 is negative 7. Are those two numbers equal? Are they the same? No, we have a false statement. When you're left with a false statement, you know that there is no solution. Let's take a look at this other special case. So I'm looking at these numbers. What if I multiply that first equation by a 4? Because 3 times 4 gives me 12. And it'll, make, it'll cancel out that negative 12. All right, if we do that, we're left with 3 times 4 gives me 12y. Negative 2 times 4, negative 8x is equal to 6 times 4, 24. On the bottom, I'm left with negative 12y plus 8x is equal to negative 24. All right, let's see what happens. Negative 12y minus 12y is 0. Negative 8 plus 8, that's 0. And 24 minus 24 is 0. So we're left with 0 plus 0 equals 0. Is 0 the same as 0? Yeah. Here we see that we have a true statement. And when we have a true statement, our answer is infinitely many solutions. All right, that's it for section 3.3, Solving by Elimination.